market internals. What the heck even are these things? We got crazy lines over here, some squigglies on this side. This thing's kind of all over the board. And then we got some price action in the bottom right. What is all of this stuff? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about what it is, what they do, how you can set up this exact screen, and how you can use this information for day trading strategies. So to truly understand and establish some context for the market internals, we got to go through a few slides. What are they in the first place? Well, the market internals are going to give us three extra measurements that give us a better idea of the strength or weakness in a given market. Now, this is the key word here. We're looking at an entire market, right? We're not just looking at one individual company. We're looking at sort of the context of the entire market in which many companies are traded. So as we'll see in just a moment, this video will focus on the New York Stock Exchange market and all of the companies that trade there. So the three measurements, what are they? You can kind of think of these three things as peeking behind the scenes and seeing what's happening, uh, again, internally in the markets. That's where the name internals come from. So the three are, we have a volume, we have what's up versus down, and we have current direction, okay? So we're gonna break all three of these down, show you how to set them up, and how we can actually use some strategies with these internals. So as we mentioned, we're looking at all of the stocks on the NYSE, which stands for the New York Stock Exchange. That's the market that I'm sort of focused on, and what that means is that these internals will give us a better idea and some better context, right, on how to trade the S&P 500. So whether or not that's the SPY ETF, the SPX index, or even our ES futures of the S&P 500, these are the internals that are relevant to this market, right? And there are also internals out there that exist for the NASDAQ. They're very similar, uh, and we'll cover that towards the very end. We only have to change a few letters, as we'll see in just a moment. So the first internal is going to be volume. Now, why is this important, and what is it actually reading? Well, it's going to compare the total daily volume that's flowing into up stocks versus down stocks. And this is based on yesterday's close. So this is a key and important takeaway here. If, uh, you know, for example's sake, let's say that this is yesterday's candle. We have an opening price, which is down here, and a closing price, which is up here. So we'll extend the close uh, with a dotted line for now. And let's say that today, we're reading our internals. Uh, how do we know if something's counting as up versus down volume? Well, if we're trading below yesterday's close, this is going to count as down volume. But if we had a gap down and now we're trading up, but we're still below yesterday's close, this is still going to count as negative or down volume. And the same is true but opposite above yesterday's close. If we're trending up, that's positive volume. If we gapped up and we're moving down lower, that's still going to count as positive volume, okay? So very important distinction there that it is measured based on yesterday's close, not today's open. So how do we actually access this within the platform? We're going to look for ticker dollar sign VOLD. Now, this is very important that we break down and really understand what these letters are telling us, right? So VOL is always going to stand for volume, and D in this case, because it's at the end, stands for difference. And all this is is a breakdown of two other tickers, or a shortening rather. So dollar sign UVOL, if you can guess what this stands for, it's going to be up, once again, VOL standing for volume, minus our D for down, once again, VOL for volume. So this right here, you can type this entire string into Thinkorswim as a ticker, but just know that VOLD will do the same exact thing and save you a bunch of uh, either headache of remembering what these are or just some time and uh, simplicity. Now, one thing to note, right? We talked about how important it is to know that this is measured based on yesterday's close. Let me give you a scenario. Here again is yesterday's candlestick. We have our open down below and our close up above. Let's extend this once again for clarity. If a stock is trading below the close, this is going to count as negative volume, right? But what happens as it crosses up through that close? Well, is this going to count as negative and this going to count as positive volume? No. What's going to happen here is that as soon as it crosses the close, even though it was trading below for some time, the total volume on the day is now going to be from negative up to positive. So all of the volume on the day will flip, and the same exact thing is true and opposite. If we were trending above yesterday's close and then we move below, 
all of that volume will then be counted as negative volume. So that's a key takeaway. And uh, remember, just when it comes to volume, we're always measuring based on where we're trading compared to yesterday's close. Let's hop into the platform and actually set this one up. We're back inside of Thinkorswim now, and what I want you to do is come into the top left search bar and just go ahead and type in dollar sign V-O-L-D, okay? And when you press enter, you might get something that looks like this, and it's completely fine if yours doesn't look like this, because we're going to adjust this to the way we need it right now. It's always important that when we're looking at market internals, we're looking at an intraday time frame, and I've found that the 15 minute time frame is sort of best. It's fast enough to give us updates quickly, but also slow enough to eliminate some of the noise that we might experience. Now, we also get these weird gray lines uh, that also have some pre and post market uh, readings, which aren't very important when it comes to market internals. So how do we shut that off? We're just gonna treat this as if it were a normal stock. We'll come into our chart settings. Again, that's this uh, icon, the gear icon in the blue bar. We'll click on that. We'll come into the equities tab. And we'll, at the bottom, we'll turn off show extended hours trading session. When I unclick and press apply, you'll see all of those gray lines have disappeared. But now how do we know when a new day starts and a day ends? Well, if we come over to the time axis tab and go ahead and click on the first display option, which is show rollover lines, I'll press OK. And now you can see we get vertical uh, dashed lines that separate each day of uh, trading, essentially. So this is how we want to set up the look and feel for all of our internals charts. Intraday, 15-minute time frame, no uh, extended hours data, as well as rollover lines so we know when a new day has started and the day is about to end. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we know that we have positive and negative values. So I'm gonna go ahead and click to draw in a zero line here. If you're not familiar with the drawing tools inside of Thinkorswim and what I'm doing right now, feel free to go and watch our latest tutorial on how to master all of them, really. We'll cover not only the uh, drawing price levels, but trend lines as well as all of the other options that Thinkorswim provides. So now we have a zero line that's drawn in. We know when we're trading above and in the positive section, and when we know uh, we know when we're trading below in the negative section, and that's great. And there's also one other script, uh, one little add-on, right, that we can bring to our uh, volume internal. And you may have seen this on some of our charts before. It's a couple of bubbles that hang up here in the top right. They're called the breath bubbles, and what those do is tell us the actual strength of the volume. It's one thing to know that the volume is positive and moving higher or negative and moving lower, but it's another thing to know how positive or how negative, how strong is that reading. And all this script is going to do is compare by dividing uh, those volumes. It's just gonna give us a ratio. So if you head on over to the Trade Brigade site, it'll also be linked down below, the first link in the description. We have a new page called, uh, it, it's going to be, the URL will be tradebrigade.co forward slash trading dash scripts, okay? It's also linked down below and it probably just popped up on the screen. The breath script is something you can download immediately right from the uh, web page. When you do so, you should get a text file and it looks something like this and we're gonna install it right now. So go ahead and copy all of this information. So on a Mac, it's command C. You can right click and copy as well. I'm gonna get rid of this. We're gonna come to our beaker icon now, which is this one in the top blue bar. If I click on that, I now have the option to create a new study. I'm gonna click create. We're presented with a window. I want you to delete everything that's in here. It should just say plot data equals close. Get rid of that and go ahead and press command V to paste in that script that we just copied. You can name this whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and name mine breath, a D T H, there we go. And all we have to do is click okay and then click okay once again. And now in the top left, once again, you will see we have these breath sort of readings, okay? So we'll talk all about what these breaths mean, what the, uh, you know, what's a good read, what's a bad read after we finish setting everything else up. Let's move into our next internal. So next up, we need to know what is up and what is down, and we can do that with something called the advanced decline line. Now, this is gonna take a measure of all of the stocks on that market. Remember, we're looking at the New York Stock Exchange, so it's comparing every single stock on the New York Stock Exchange, and it's seeing if they're positive or negative based on yesterday's close. So once again, remember that it's critical we're looking at yesterday's close, not today's open. So as example, once again, say this is yesterday's candle, we have an open that's down here and a close that's up at the top. We have the close extending. If we're trading down here, 
it's pretty straightforward. That's going to be a negative stock, whether or not we're moving lower or moving higher. It doesn't matter. We're below yesterday's close. That is a decliner. If we're trading above, again, same thing. If we're up or if we're down, that is counted as an advancer or a positive reading here on the advanced decline line. Now, if we cross through the open, right, uh, just like we talked about with the volume, if we cross through that, that close rather from yesterday, then the entirety, that, that full reading, will switch to positive. If we cross to the downside, that full reading will switch to negative, okay? So all of the stocks on, in this case, the New York Stock Exchange are being read, and the way we access this is by typing in dollar sign ADD, which once again is a shortened version of actually typing in our advancers versus or minus our decliners. So save yourself some time, just go straight to the ADD, and once again, if it starts positive and goes negative, the entire flip will be uh, reflected, meaning it will go from a minus one to a plus one if we go from negative to positive, and vice versa if we go from positive to negative. Let's set this up now. So we're back inside of the Thinkorswim platform. Remember, 15 minute time frame is still good. We wanna keep our extended market off and the rollover lines are good to delineate each day. What I'm gonna do is come into the top left and I'm gonna actually show you this time that if we type in dollar sign ADVN for advancers minus dollar sign DECN, it will bring up something that looks like this. Okay, I'll press enter and we get something that looks like this. Now, this is exactly what we wanna be looking at but remember, we can also access it with the dollar sign ADD. Before we do so, I do wanna just make a quick note that if you see these red and green dotted lines on your chart, all that means is that our breath bubbles are still on. If you come into here and turn that study off, it will eliminate those red and green lines and you should be left with a blank chart, okay? So the breath is really saved for the volume. You don't really need to put it on top of your advanced decliners. Again, mental snapshot here, I'm gonna switch over now to dollar sign ADD, and when I press enter, the only thing that's gonna change here is I have some pre-drawn um, lines and levels on. So I'll press enter, and there you go. The, the price action, the candles, are the exact same, but now you're seeing we have a zero line, we have negative 1500 and negative 2000, as well as positive 1500 and positive 2000. And again, we'll talk about what all these levels mean, what's a strong read, what's a weak read, as we start to get into the strategy here. But in terms of setting it up, once again, just go ahead and use the price level tool to manually draw in the zero line, the 1500 mark, and the 200, uh, 2000 mark, as well as the negative values as well. Now, something that's pretty cool about this specific advanced decline line is that if we come into the market watch tab in thinkorswim we'll just click on it click on the visualize tab now if i come in here to watch list and just come down into public i'm going to go ahead and find the new york stock exchange because remember that's what our internals are looking at here in this example so i'll click and now i get this thing it's, it's calculating all these values and basically what i want to show you is that the add is a visual representation of what's happening here in the top left, okay? We have our advancers, which is going to be 888, and our decliners, which is going to be 1,852. And when we subtract the two, that's what we're left with here on our advanced decline line. You can see that it's reading down here at minus 1,131, okay? So that is where this calculation is coming from, and it's a better visual representation than coming into the market watch tab and just watching these numbers, right? This is pretty tough to, to see what's actually happening. It's pretty poor visualization. But when we come into the chart, Again, this is that visual that is actually more useful and can give us some more insight into what's happening with the market. Let's continue on and then we'll talk about strategy. And our last internal to sort of explain is going to be finding the current direction of what's happening this instant. And we do that with an indicator called the tick. So it's gonna compare the total number of stocks on the market, in this case, the New York Stock Exchange, that are on an uptick, meaning that the price that just printed, that just traded, is above the prior price that traded, or the stocks that are on a downtick, meaning that the, the trade price now is below the last trade price, okay? So this is all happening independent of yesterday's close. This is the only internal that does not care about where we're trading in relationship to yesterday's close. If, for example, well, let's just draw it out. Remember, this is yesterday's candle. We'll say that the open is down here and the close is up here. We'll extend the close once again like this. If we're trading like this, we're counting these as upticks, positive ticks, even though we're below yesterday's close. If we do something like this, 
these are still positive ticks because we're moving in the upward direction. Now, if we do something like this, we're above yesterday's close and we're trending down and the trade prices are lower than the last trade price, then these will be negative ticks regardless of whether or not we are above or below yesterday's close. Now, another situation that might be relevant is if we're trading something like this, these are upticks, but as soon as we pull back something like that and these trade prices are lower than the last trade price, then these are counted as down ticks or negative ticks, okay? So it's it's a very, very fast indicator. It's reading what's happening at this exact moment in time as opposed to, once again, where we are in comparison to yesterday's close, okay? So this, as we've said, is the fastest indicator and we can access it on Thinkorswim or many other chart platforms by just typing in dollar sign T-I-C-K. This is not a shortening of any other uh, sort of indicators. You know, it, it's not a subtraction of any two. It simply is what it is. It's dollar sign T-I-C-K. It's updated every few seconds. I believe it's three. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it, it's very fast. Just know that. So it's going to respond to what the actual market is doing. All of those stocks, again, for the example of this video on the New York Stock Exchange are doing every few seconds. So it's going to give you insight into what's happening right now. Let's go ahead and set this one up. So back inside of the platform, we're going to go ahead and just search for once again, dollar sign T-I-C-K. It's not a shortening of any other two. It just is what it is. You should be left with something like this if you've remained on a 15 minute time frame, extended hours off and rollover lines to show each day. On. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to eliminate some of the noise and just walk you through what I have here on the chart. Once again, I have a zero line drawn in. I have an 800 line drawn in. I have a 1000 line drawn in and then also the negative equivalent. So minus 800 as well as minus 1000. And those are just going to give us ideas of extremes here in the tick read. Okay. And once again, we'll talk all about strategy and what's a good reading or a bad reading in just a moment. Again, this is the last internal to set up here. Uh, so bear with me. If you want to add and beef up the tick, there's a few indicators and scripts that we have, right? The first one is again, accessible at our website at tradebrigade.com forward slash trading dash scripts. And the first one is going to be the trade brigade tick high low, as well as distribution script. And what this is going to do, again, we can install this the same exact way as what we did with the, um, the breath there. What this is going to do, if we just copy and paste it real quick, we'll go through it one more time. It's going to show us what the high and low tick of the day is, as well as what our, uh, where the tick bars are closing. So we'll create a new study as we did before. We will clean out everything we have in here. We will paste what we just copied and we will press okay. We'll press okay once again, and we're left with a script like this. So if I scrunch this up, you should be able to see some red arrows here too. So the script we just installed, once again, is going to show us in the top left, the high tick of the day, it resets every single day, the low tick of the day, and what the current tick is right now. If it's, it's, if it's a negative tick, it will be red. If it's a positive tick, it will be green. Very simple and straightforward. To the upside, or, or in terms of the distribution, should I say rather, um, we have arrows to indicate to us where these 15 minute bars are closing. If we're closing above the zero line, then we'll get an arrow that prints up here around the 1350 mark. Okay, so every single time a tick bar closes in the positive section, we get an arrow. If it closes in the negative section, we get a red arrow down here, once again, around that negative 1350 mark. You can customize all these settings in the script itself. But what this does is allow us just to have a quick visual of uh, whether or not you know the majority of the day was bullish or if we had some bearish action, right, down below with our red triangle. So quick visual there. Once again, this script is available on our website. And then the last one we can add is going to be our cumulative tick. I'm going to add that now. This is a premium script. So I'll add it and I'll be back in just a moment. So there we go. If you've decided to upgrade your tick with the premium script there and the cumulative option, then your chart should look something like this. All right. So let's go ahead and actually get into how we can use these uh, indicators, these internals for day trading and make some money with them. So now we're on a screen that we call the internals quad. OK, so we have the volume in the top left, VOLD, the advanced decliners in the top right, ADD, 
ticks in the bottom left, dollar sign T-I-C-K, and then we have some form of S&P 500 uh, price action in our bottom right. Now, whether or not you want to use uh, futures, uh, the ES, the MES for the micro futures, whether or not you want to use SPY or the SPX, whatever it is, I would really encourage that you have some form of price action in your bottom right portion of the screen, okay? So let's talk about some actual readings here, some actual numbers, and talk about some strategy. In, let's start in the top left, okay? We'll start with volume. These breath bubbles up here are going to be your friend whenever it comes to determining whether or not we have a trending day on our hands. So if you've traded the markets, sometimes you know that the market can just continue to chug up what seems like forever. Or the market can stay flat and be really choppy and it can be difficult to trade. And these breath indicators in the top left are going to help you out a bunch in determining what type of day it is. If our readings up here for the New York Stock Exchange are something like one uh, to one, uh, either positive or negative, what that's telling us is there isn't really a lot of strength or a lot of volume flowing into the market. So on days like that, you can pretty much assume that we should have choppy action, back and forth, responsive trade at all of our key levels that we talk about. If the readings start to get uh, really uh, strong, right, we're looking at readings that to the positive side are going to be at least two to one, if not uh, higher, the drawing's pretty tough, if not two to one, probably things like three, four, five to one positive on our New York Stock Exchange, if you start to see that, it probably means we have an upward trending day on our hands. Now, I wish I could rewind this and show you some in, uh, instances of that, but the breath is just calculated in the moment, okay? I cannot rewind that one and line it up with a specific day, uh, but just know, again, if we're seeing positive reads that are better than two to one, three to one, four to one positive, you probably have an uptrending day on your hand. To the downside though, if our reads are starting to get below five to one, and it's really important to note the difference here, the downside reads are always going to be much more aggressive than our upside reads. So to see a downward trending day happen, you really need to start to see four to, negative four to one, negative five, six, seven. Sometimes it even gets up as high as, you know, teens, right? We, we can see 12, negative 12 to one, negative 15 to one. That's gonna be a sign that we clearly have a downtrending day on our hands. Now, what's actually happening uh, between the two is also another tell. If the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ are not in sync, meaning that they're divergent, there's uh, one's positive and one's negative, that's going to be another indicator that we could potentially see a choppy day in both markets. All right. So what about our actual uh, price action here on the VOLD? Well, what's going to be quite apparent is if we start to see these readings as one to one or maybe, you know, 1.5 to one really dull readings there, our price action is going to hover close to the zero line because there's no conviction. There's no real true volume either flowing up or down. So that's going to be once again indicative of a choppy day. If we start to see an early read and this thing takes off to the upside, that is going to be indicative of a trending up day. And the same is true for the downside. But the key takeaway there is that it needs to happen almost immediately off of the open. Let's just say for theoretical sake, if we have the volume that's sort of staying sideways around zero and then late in the day, it pushes up something like that. I wouldn't really have confidence in that move because for the majority of the day, right, this section right here, the volume was really not supporting all of the action that was happening, okay? okay? So that is the volume in a nutshell. In terms of our advanced decline line, this, once again, is comparing all of the stocks uh, that are either trading above or below yesterday's close. If we're stuck in a range uh, of negative 1,500 to negative 2,000, meaning anything down here, or in a range of positive 2,000 to 1,500, that means we're likely going to have a trending day in whatever direction uh, you know we're stuck in the range. If it's positive, we will likely see a positive trending day to the upside. This is what we like to call a pegged advanced decline line where it just kind of hovers and hangs out up here. There's, it basically means, if we think about it logically, right, that the majority of the stocks in, in this case, the New York Stock Exchange are trading above yesterday's close, which is a bullish thing, indicating that we have upward action across the market, okay? So think about this logically when it comes time to, you know, really implementing what's happening here. So trending days, if we're stuck in these two ranges, either up or down, and once again, if we're trading around the zero line in here, what do you expect? 
probably a choppy day as stocks can't really figure out whether or not they want to trade positive or negative. Every single time you cross that zero line, it's just showing more indecision in the stock market as a whole if we're once again looking at the New York Stock Exchange. So on days where we're trending up above, you probably want to be long biased. If we're stuck in the middle, you probably want to take responsive trades off of key levels. If we're trending down below in this lower section, you probably want to be looking for shorts or just avoiding new long-sided trades, okay? And lastly, we have the tick in the bottom left. Now, this is the fastest as we've talked about. And how do we actually use this to our advantage? It might look like a whole lot of uh, nothing, right? If, if we're looking at it like this, but because it's the fastest, I would really advise that you just take it day by day, candle by candle. So I'm gonna zoom in here on Friday and we'll talk about the action, okay? Do you think that this day on Friday was primarily bullish or bearish? Now, what you should be saying, if we're just looking at our quick uh, sort of distribution triangles, it was mostly bullish, right? A majority of these candlesticks actually closed above the zero line, meaning more stocks throughout the day were actually trending higher as opposed to lower. And remember, this is regardless and independent of where yesterday's close was. So that being said, if we actually zoom in on Friday's price action, let's take a look. We saw a pretty nasty move to the downside early on in the day. And if we pair this up with where our ticks are, this is going to be very telling, right? We have a move in the tick down to these very extreme levels here at minus 1000. So whenever you see that reading happen, okay, I want you to remember that that is extremely emotional and most importantly, non-sustainable selling, whether it's it's negative or positive. It can be unsustainable buying as well and very emotional buying if we're hanging out in the plus 1000 mark uh, too, right? This is going to go both ways here. But for this example, we know that this was extremely emotional selling and you can't really sustain that. So what's next up as most important is to see what happens after that negative tick read uh, actually prints. From there, you can see we actually get lift back into the zero line. So what this is telling us is, again, this is emotional selling, and you probably do not want to be a seller at these levels. If you tried to short down here, I mean, just looking at the ES price action, it obviously would not have worked. You would have been stopped out or taken a major loss if you decided to hold it for the day. So by knowing that the tick was at an extremely oversold reading, you could have avoided taking a short trade or, in the flip side, you could have taken a long trade, right? We call this a fade when you're going against the predominant direction of the market. So whenever you see that minus a thousand or plus a thousand tick, you can generally take a fade in our S&P products. Now you have to be very quick about it because it could roll over, right? Let's say the tick comes into the zero line and then it sort of bobbles lower and then we trend lower throughout the day. You could get stuck, right? So you'd be very quick with the fades, but it is a potential setup for you to take. Okay, the next thing to note here about this day is what happens, right? What happens with our ticks? If I draw in a trend line, something that looks like this, right? You can quite clearly see that our tick lows are continuing to get higher. So do we have any reason to believe that this selling would have materialized into more selling? Absolutely not. Our ticks remained more bullish. We started to get more of these bullish closes as noted by the green triangles. And from there, you can see the market rallied the rest of the day. So it all really started with an extreme oversold tick. And then from there, monitoring what happens with our lows. Sometimes it's all about, in the tick at least, where you don't go, okay? So even though we did spend some time in the negative section in these candlesticks, we did not go all the way back down to these uh, oversold levels, the minus 800, minus 1000. So always remember with the tick, sometimes it's all about not how high you go, but rather how low you don't go. Okay, so there's one example there. In terms of what the cumulative tick did as well, you would have known towards the end of the day that people were starting to accumulate shares here, okay? We saw this build start to happen to the upside. And just for reference point, if you're, uh, you know, if you decide to go ahead and get the premium script of the cumulative tick, if whenever you're looking at the day, right, if by noontime, so 12 o'clock, we have a reading that's around 2000, you probably have a trending day to the upside on your hands. If it's minus 2000, you probably have a trending day lower on your hands. And again, you can compare this to what's also happening 
with our volume, with our breath, with our advanced decline line. So it's not like you only look at one of these indicators. You look at them as a group and what's actually happening with price action. Okay, so I want to show a few examples as well of maybe some more choppy action. So here would be a day in the tick on Tuesday. Let's pair that up with our ES price action. Uh, Tuesday would have been a little bit further back. There we go. So here is Tuesday, okay? And what I want to illustrate on this Tuesday is the fact that here, our cumulative tick is telling us that we're flat, okay? So that right off the bat is a tell. If we can't get to the 2000 minus 2000 mark by at least noon, you probably have a choppy day on your hands. But what's interesting here is where are the bulk of the ticks in the morning? They're all happening above the zero line. Now, what does that tell us? Well, most of the stocks across the New York Stock Exchange are actually trending up intraday. If we look at what was happening on Tuesday in terms of our advanced decliners, our advanced decliners were positive, right? They weren't even close to the zero line, but again, they weren't quite up here in trend zone. I would say it's a slightly bull it's like a cautiously bullish reading, right? And in terms of our volume, what was happening there? Well, again, remember, we got immediate lift right out of the gates. I, I really wish I could rewind this reading up here for you, but just know on this day, we had readings that were, you know, two to one positive. At times we had three to one positive. Basically it was a strong bullish read and they were in sync. Our New York Stock Exchange and our NASDAQ were in sync, okay? So knowing all of this, as we started to see this sell-off here on Tuesday afternoon, right around lunchtime, right? Would you have been a believer that this move to the downside would have sustained itself much lower? Well, you should have been saying, because we have a majority of positive ticks, we're not really trending up or down, our breath is pretty bullish, we had immediate lift off of the open in the volume, and we're trending up here, kind of going sideways and holding some of these like 800 plus 700 uh, advanced decline reads. So when you see this move, you can probably have the confidence to say, okay, if we come into a key point, whether or not it's yesterday's close, the overnight low, yesterday's low, uh, yesterday's high, any of our key reference points uh, in the ES futures, right? You could probably be a buyer there against this very strong move to the downside, right? Because our internals were telling us that there were no stronger sellers present in this market and you would have been rewarded quite nicely if you had faith in what the context of the market was telling you, right? You could have taken this long down here for a fade. Again, you want to be aggressive because you, you don't want to you don't want to ignore the price action. We can't ignore the fact that this is some pretty strong red action. But you can take a stab. You can go long here. Uh, maybe you take a few off here, and then you trail stop the rest. And if you did that, again, you would have been paid nicely because you would have had the confidence in the market internals and establishing some context on the day of what was actually happening in the underpinnings of the S&P 500 based on the New York Stock Exchange, okay? And let's look for a downside um, example as well. Um, it might be a little tough to find one uh, because the market has been so up and up recently. Let's try to find a down day here and compare that in the ES to what we have in our internals, where we will expand our time frame here to something like a 30 day. Uh, and we'll come into, uh, let's go ahead and look at, wow. Okay. So here, what day is this? This Monday, we obviously had some nasty, nasty selling action. Uh, this is going to be on the 4th of January. So let's go ahead and find that on the rest of our internals. I'll be back in a moment. All right, so here we are. We have everything lined up now. The days we want to focus on are going to be this action right here, obviously this action right here in the tick. It's most of the screen right here, and of course the huge red day in the ES right here. So what we want to look at is all of the context of the day when this sell-off happened. Okay, what was our volume doing at the open? It actually opened up positive, but then it went negative. So what does that tell you? That a majority of the stocks where the volume is flowing those stocks have actually you know, opened up above yesterday's close, and now they're starting to move below yesterday's close with some serious volume flowing in. Remember that as this uh, starts to get more steep, these readings are probably getting a little bit more intense, okay? So red here in the volume, especially knowing that we failed to hold above that zero line. That's a tell, right? You need to know when you cross that zero line that there's really a key uh, shift happening with where stocks are trading, above versus below yesterday's close. In terms of our advanced decline line, what happened here? Again, remember, right off the gates, 
we were pretty much aggressive straight into the zero line. And at that zero line, what did we do? Instead of bouncing here, which you might expect, uh, you know, from the zero line to provide a little bit of support, we slice right down through it. And where do we go? Right to the minus 1500, which as we know, is going to be a trending down zone for our uh, New York Stock Exchange, at least. Okay. So right off the bat, we know Okay, we're in store for potentially a pretty bearish day because it looks like, you know, everything's kind of collapsing here. We're not holding the zero line in the advanced decliners. We're not holding it in the volume. What's happening with our tick? Okay, here's another great tell for you. If we open the tick above or sort of around our extreme reads, whether or not it's 1,800 or slightly above, and we pull into the zero line, in general, you always want to watch for that zero line to hold as support. But if that does not happen then what do you think the case is? Well, we're obviously going to start printing some more negative ticks indicating to us that we could not maintain, you know, maybe this is just a gap up, meaning that many ticks uh, or many uh, readings are positive because we're moving up off the open. That As soon as that starts to not hold anymore and we start to go negative and not hold the zero line as support, it pretty much means that none of those gap ups are holding, right? So all of these things combined are telling us to start looking out for some bearish cases in our S&P 500, right? That's going to be tracked by the New York Stock Exchange. What's happening with our cumulative read? Again, if we check in about with where 12 o'clock is and pair this up with our Y axis, we're sort of already at that minus 2,500 read, okay? So all things considered, we know that we're in store for a pretty bearish day just based on the context of this move and everything that's happening in the internals. And how did that materialize in the ES, in the S&P 500? Well, obviously we saw a huge downtrend and we could have had a little bit more confidence in something like this because of what our internals were telling us as opposed to, as we talked about in that last example, being able to be a buyer, right? We, we, were, we were buying in the face of a downtrend um, with some confidence because of what everything the internals were telling us. You would not want to do something like that on a day like today where we saw a negative volume. Breaths, once again, were probably very negative, somewhere either around negative three, four, uh, maybe even all the way up to negative eight to one neg uh, you know, red, and they're in sync on both exchanges. You do not want to try to be a buyer in that type of environment. So I hope this was helpful. I hope walking through some of these scenarios really gave you a better idea on how to use our market internals, right? You're going to use them to establish context of any move that happens in the market. Is your tick confirming the action that happened on the day? Is your volume confirming the action that happened on the day? Is, uh, you know, is the advanced decline line doing the same as well? And if we're trading intraday, then, you know, can you be a buyer after a huge move to the downside? Are the internals still green enough to give you that confidence? Or are you going to be a seller if we see a large rally, but all of our internals are red? Okay, so these are the things I want you to start thinking about as you start to monitor the internals on your own. Again, if you want to get all of these scripts, you can head over to tradebrigade.co forward slash trading dash scripts. It will be the first link down below in the description. And now you can start to use all of the New York Stock Exchange internals on your own and with some true confidence.